Studio Jubilee, a company that delivers critically acclaimed animated magic that isn't Disney. This Japanese animation studio has made 20 movies, 16 short films, and a number of commercials, music videos, and other forms of media since its inception in 1985. Today, we are going to take you inside the studio, bringing you the history, the artistry, and the magic that is Studio Jubilee. Hayao Miyazaki, the man behind such works as My Neighbor Totoro, The Secret World of Arietti, and Spirited Away, and a true idol in the animation and film industries. Miyazaki is now a widely known name by critics and viewers alike. Miyazaki began his career with Toei Animation in April of 1963, where he worked as an animator on the anime series Wolf Boy Ken, among other projects. It didn't take long for Miyazaki's leadership skills to shine through, becoming chief secretary for Toei's labor union. One year after that, Miyazaki found his first major success as an artist for the film Gulliver's Travels Beyond the Moon, to which he showed his creative abilities by developing an entirely new end to the film during production that became the ending in the final cut. His talent became apparent to many people, and in the 20 years following, he worked on a great number of projects with a number of industry leaders. It was in 1979 that Miyazaki directed his first feature-length film, The Castle of Cagliostro, alongside his TV series, Sherlock Hound, a highly popular retelling of the Sherlock Holmes tales through anthropomorphic animals. The combination of these two successes, and his manga, Nausicaa, led him to his largest work yet, where his acclaim would grow to become known to more than just those in the film industry, and he would begin his significant work with fellow animator, Isao Takahata. The date? is May 31st, 1983. Work had begun on Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind, an animated film adaptation of Hayao Miyazaki's graphic novel series known to Japan as manga, of the same name. Working alongside him as a producer was Isao Takahata, a man who would later go on to help in the creation of Studio Ghibli with Miyazaki. The film was released less than one year later, on March 11th of 1984, to generally positive reviews. It grossed about 1.5 billion yen at the box office, equivalent to about 15 million dollars. After the success of Nausicaa, Miyazaki, Takahara, and fellow producer Toshio Suzuki joined together to found Studio Ghibli in June of 1985, with the intent of, as they say, blowing a new wind through the animation industry. They did just that, spawning a wind that continues to blow decades later. Within a couple of years, Ghibli made leaps and bounds from their starting point. They started development on Lapita, Castle in the Sky, known in the West as just Castle in the Sky. It was directed and written by Miyazaki and produced by Takahata. The film was well received by the Japanese public and was an economic success. It also won the Anime Age Anime Grand Prix. It did not receive a major Western release until its theatrical run in 1998. It was shortly after the success of Castle in the Sky the production began on two films simultaneously, Takahata's Grave of the Fireflies and Miyazaki's hit My Neighbor Totoro. Grave of the Fireflies was based on a novel of the same name by Akiyuki Nozaka. The film followed two fictional children in Japan through their desperate struggle to survive during the latter years of World War II. The film received critical acclaim for its ability to emotionally reach audiences in both Japan and America. The film was one of the first to prove Takahata's filmmaking abilities, thrusting him from the role of producer to that of director and writer. While Grave of the Fireflies took a serious approach, Miyazaki took a much lighter and child-centric tone for his film, My Neighbor Totoro. Throughout production, Miyazaki was set on creating a film with bright visuals and a vibrant setting, a concept that a majority of his staff was opposed to. Of course, as clearly displayed by the final product, his vision prevailed, and the creature he created for the film became highly beloved and even became the Studio Ghibli logo. The film reached great heights, receiving rave reviews again in both Japan and America. My Neighbor Totoro was also the first film to be distributed in the West by Disney, the beginning of a long-lasting and powerful partnership. The great success of Totoro was also a true kickstart to Ghibli's extensive library of work.
Ghibli's success skyrocketed with their next five films. The first of these was Kiki's Delivery Service, directed, produced, and adapted by Hayao Miyazaki, which followed the adventures of a young witch and her coming-of-age story based on the 1985 novel of the same name by Aiko Kodono. Miyazaki has said in the past how strongly he feels about the underlying themes of independence created by the plot and protagonist, Kiki. The film was also Ghibli's largest economic success at the time. It grossed more than any other movie at the Japanese box office in 1989, and also won a number of awards, including another Animage Award. Its North American translation, again handled by Disney, turned out to be a critical success among Western viewers almost as much as that of Japanese audiences. Two years later, Isao Takahata's Only Yesterday, which shares its title with the manga it was based on, was released. The film tackled more mature themes and showcased a number of adult and gender issues. Upon release, however, the film attracted all types of people as opposed to the expected demographic of female adults. Like its predecessor, it was also the highest grossing film in Japan of that year. The film was never released outside of Japan. However, its significance to the animation industry is still unprecedented as it showed animators and writers that mature themes could still flourish in animated features. The following year, Miyazaki's Porco Rosso was released. The film followed an ex-World War I pilot who was cursed to take on the appearance of a pig as he helps a young girl and confronts his own very human problems. The film was originally planned as a short film to be shown on Japanese flights. However, due to real-world conflicts breaking out, Miyazaki was inspired to give the film more depth and a more serious tone. Despite the change, the airlines continued to fund the project, and the film ended up being shown on flights long before its theatrical release. The film was a critical success, and scored the top box office position of 1992. It was a hit in the West as well, even attracting the talent of Michael Keaton as the voice of Porco. Two years later, Takahata again took Ghibli's reins to release Pompoko, a whimsical film that follows the mischievous adventures of a group of Tanookis, raccoon-like creatures. The film was noted for its consistent and fluid change of style throughout, shifting between realistic interpretations and the cartoony creations of Shigeru Sugori's manga. The film continued Ghibli's reputation and grabbed the top box office spot of 1994, and it was also a step forward for the studio, as it was the first picture to use computer graphics. The following film, written by Hayao Miyazaki, was the directing debut of Yoshifume Kondo, Whisper of the Heart. The film was a tale that follows the fantastical events of a young girl who leads a seemingly ordinary life. It was the first Studio Ghibli movie to be directed by somebody other than Takahata or Miyazaki. Sadly, while Studio Ghibli looked forward to working with Kondo in the future, he passed away before any more collaborations could occur. As usual, the film received fantastic acclaim. However, unlike their past movies, the film's music also received a great amount of attention. In 2002, the film spawned a spin-off, the Cat Returns, directed by Hiroyuki Morita and written by Raiko Yoshida, which centered around yet another young woman and her adventures with a major character from Whisper of the Heart, a mystical anthropomorphic cat as he guides the girl through his magical world. Whisper of the Heart was the end of a miniature era for Ghibli, as they began to move towards more modern and digital forms of animation, but for many years to come they continued to supply the quality people had come to expect from them. Following the financial successes of their previous five films, fans of the animation industry had high hopes for Ghibli's next film, and Ghibli delivered, as the movie became one of Ghibli's most highly praised pictures. In 1997, two years after Whisper of the Heart, Ghibli released Princess Mononoke, a fantasy picture directed and written by Hayao Miyazaki. The film followed the conflicts of a young warrior, Ashitaka, as he falls in the middle of a struggle between greedy men and the powerful forces of nature. On his journey, he meets a young woman, San, Princess Mononoke, or if directly translated, the Spirit Princess, who has deep connections to the forest spirits and wishes only to protect the great forest against the wrath of man. The film went as far as to earn the Japanese Academy Award for Best Picture of the Year, and to be the first film to gross 10 billion yen in Japan. Miyazaki had been developing the idea for Mononoke since the 70s. Many of the ideas were very difficult to create in a movie at the time, so he decided against making the film. With the inclusion of digital animation, the film became much more feasible, and Miyazaki used his unused ideas to create an entire film. 
The film received a Western translation by Miramax Films, who at the time was owned by Disney. The film was a success in every way imaginable, and showed to many the great potential of Studio Ghibli to make deep and developed films. It was also the beginning of a new digital age for the studio. Ghibli took a very sharp turn with her next film two years later, My Neighbors the Yamadas, a comedy based on the Japanese comic strip by Hisaishi Ishii. The film was directed and written by Isao Takahata. It took on an animation style never before used by Studio Ghibli. Having the appearance of a moving comic strip, it is also very significant for Ghibli, as it is the first of their films to be made entirely through digital means. The film made over 2 billion yen at the box office. It was shortly after the release of Yamada's that production began on what is now considered by many to be Ghibli's greatest creation and the true representative of the career of Hayao Miyazaki. Hayao Miyazaki has created some of the most acclaimed and influential films of both the animation and film industries. In 2001, Spirited Away was released. It was beyond well received, and it was helmed as one of the greatest films of all time. It centered around a young girl whose family was on their way to their new home. Upon taking a wrong turn and exploring abandoned carnival grounds, they are transported into a magical land full of mystery and intrigue. Her parents are soon transformed into pigs after eating from a conspicuous food stand, and Chihiro, the protagonist, is sent on a journey to save her family and discover the secrets that the magical land holds. Currently, based on public scores, Spirited Away is considered the greatest animated film ever created, and it ranks 33rd on IMDb's list of best movies of all time, based on over 300,000 user submitted scores. It has an average rating of 94 out of 100 from film critics. To this day, it is still the highest grossing movie at the Japanese box office. The film also won an American Academy Award for Best Animated Picture, making it the only non-American film at the time to have won a category other than foreign film. The film was nominated for five other major awards, winning them all. While the success of Spirited Away was astronomical, Ghibli was anything but finished, with a handful of movies still on the way for them. After the enormous success of Spirited Away and the release of The Cat Returns in 2002, Miyazaki began production on his next major picture, Howl's Moving Castle. The film, which was based on an American novel by Diana Wine Jones, began production under the lead of Mamoru Hasoda, who handed the reins to Miyazaki during the early stages of production so that he could retire. The film follows a cursed young woman who seeks out the help of an inexperienced young wizard to help her, with a number of adventures to follow. Miyazaki. With the help of Jones herself, was able to make a number of liberties to alter and ultimately better the plot for its animated debut. The film was mapped out using physical art, with the characters and settings being painted and then later digitized to create a more hand-drawn feel. This is a technique that would persist in Miyazaki films to follow. The film opened up to positive reviews and won a number of smaller awards. The movie struck a lot of people as a fantastic representation of the finding of true self. It was also a box office success earning about 23 billion yen. Less than two years later, following the success of Howl's Moving Castle, Ghibli released Tales from Earthsea, the directing debut of Hayao Miyazaki's son, Goro Miyazaki. The film follows a young wizard as he attempts to discover the truth behind some strange events that he witnessed, and along the way he encounters a number of self-changing events. The reception for Earthsea was not astounding in comparison to other Ghibli movies. However, on its own it was well received, and it made about 7.5 billion yen during its run. Studio Ghibli pulled Hayao Miyazaki back to the head of production for its next film, Ponyo on the Cliff, better known as just Ponyo. The film was a rare combination of fantasy and comedy, as it followed the adventures of a five-year-old boy as he tries to help the goldfish princess achieve her goal of becoming human. The film was simple, 
and a number of people pointed that out as being one of its greatest strong suits. The film went back to traditional animation style, as Miyazaki decided it would best reach its potential if it was a hand-drawn project. And so it was, making the project take nearly four years to produce, and ending up with over 170,000 drawn images. The film was a hit at the Japanese box office, making about 3.5 billion yen, but things did not stop after its Japanese release. The dubbing of the film in America was headed by Pixar's John Lasseter, and among the voice actors were Tina Fey, Matt Damon, and Betty White. Its American theatrical release was wider than any Ghibli movie before it, reaching 20 times more theaters than Ghibli's next biggest American release, Princess Mononoke, which only reached 38 theaters nationwide. Truly, Ponyo was a hit for Ghibli, being well-received by critics and becoming one of Ghibli's biggest box office successes. But most importantly, it became one of the biggest thrusts for Ghibli into the West, with a bigger release and wave of success than any Studio Ghibli movie released in America before it. But it wasn't Ghibli's biggest American release for long. Ghibli's next film, The Secret World of Arietti, was directed by Hiromasa Yonabayashi and co-written by Hayao Miyazaki. It was a major success, just as Studio Ghibli's previous movie. The film follows the events that occur in a young boy's life after he discovers a four-inch tall girl living in his house without him previously knowing. The plot was esteemed for being mature enough to interest and entertain its adult audiences while also becoming loved by child viewers. The film also received a good amount of attention for its soundtrack, similar to that of Whisper of the Heart. For both American and Japanese releases of the film, there was promotional music being released by the voice actors. The film was a box office hit in Japan and America, making about 14 billion yen. The American release of the film was substantial as well, adding about 600 theaters to Ponyo's total. One year after The Secret World of Arietti, Goro Miyazaki's From Up on Poppy Hill was released. He directed the film that was written by his father, and it saw much more success than his previous outing. The film follows a group of Japanese teenagers as they try to save their clubhouse from being destroyed for the Olympics, with a large number of aspects of its theme and plot being taken directly from the history of that time period. The film made a fair amount of revenue at the box office and received critical success. Studio Ghibli's next project was actually a cooperative work. It was a Japanese video game by esteemed developer Level 5 and publisher Bandai Namco. Nino Kuni, Wrath of the White Witch. The game's cutscenes were produced by Ghibli, and during gameplay, while the graphics are a cell shaded 3D, there was a very clear influence from Ghibli. The plot was also very similar to something out of a Ghibli movie, following the adventures of a young boy turned wizard, Oliver, on his journey through a magical world to save his mother. The game received high acclaim, winning many awards and being praised for its style that was influenced and produced by Studio Ghibli. Miyazaki has produced some of the most critically acclaimed and influential films of the animation industry, and his career as a director, screenwriter, and artist was simply brilliant. However, all good things must come to an end. Miyazaki announced that he would be retiring after 50 years, 10 genius films with Ghibli, and the release of his final film, The Wind Rises. The film was a fictional biopic of a real figure, Jiro Horikoshi, a Japanese plane designer, as he went through the struggles of life and love. The film has been helmed as one of Miyazaki's most emotional and mature films. The picture was a financial success, being the highest grossing movie in Japan in 2013. It was nominated and won a great number of awards in Japan, including the Japanese Academy Award for Best Animation and Best Musical Score. The film was not only a hit in Japan, as it received a great amount of acclaim in America and attracted some big name stars to be part of the voice cast, including Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Emily Blunt, Martin Short, and Stanley Tucci. The film received a handful of perfect scores from American critics and was nominated for the Animation Academy Award. Originally, Miyazaki's final film was supposed to be a sequel to his hit Ponyo. However, he followed the advice of some of his fellow producers and became inspired by a quote from the real-life Jiro Horikoshi, All I wanted to do was make something beautiful. The film To Follow the Wind Rises ended up being The Tale of Princess Kaguya an original film by Isao Takahata based on an old Japanese folk tale. The film follows the life of Kaguya, a girl found as an infant by a bamboo farmer when she was only inches tall, as she would later go on to a life of nobility and encounter a number of conflicts. The film was a critical success, being praised for its unique and attractive art style, as well as its great storytelling abilities. 
All of these succeeded to net the movie a number of award nominations. The film was also bound for American release with the voices of Chloe Grace Moretz and James Caan. The film had a five-year production cycle, during which production began on Jubilee's final film, When Marnie Was There, by Hiromasa Yunaibayashi. The film was well received upon its recent release and fared well at the box office. After the announcement of Hayao Miyazaki's retirement, a lack of box office success that the studio had had in the past, and before the release of When Marnie Was There, Studio Ghibli announced that it would be closing its doors to the animation studio, and would from there on out exclusively distribute instead of produce movies. Thus, When Marnie Was There was to become Studio Ghibli's final feature film, and the legend and legacy of Studio Ghibli would come to a close. Studio Ghibli will forever be remembered as one of the greats of the film industry, and has put out some of the most acclaimed movies of the animation industry. Hayao Miyazaki is widely considered one of the world's best filmmakers to date, and his career came to one of the strongest closes ever seen. The studio faded shortly after his retirement, but the impact was anything but gone. Ghibli taught the world so much, it showed them how deep an animated picture could be, how broad its audience could be, and how important its presence was to the animation industry. It was historic. It was beautifully crafted. It was magical. It was Studio Jubilee.